I'd say I've had a beard for like the last two years, coming up on three years now. And now that I've cut it, it's like everybody just flips out and they're like, Whoa. All right guys, so we are back today with another deep dive. And today, if I sound a little funny, it's because I, I've got a, uh, I got a little problem in my throat. I feel like I'm sick. But we're gonna keep going and we're gonna break through and we're gonna keep doing these deep dives because I can't get behind. If I get behind, then I'm, I'm gonna kick myself. So today we're actually going over a highly requested Pokemon. One that because I've been putting it off and because other Pokemon have been getting more votes lately and it just kind of keeps falling further and further down the list, I've kind of been anticipating this one and I'm really excited to see how Torkoal turns out here. Today we are looking at Torkoal, a pure fire type Pokemon, maxing out at level 40 with 15 IVs across the board. You can hit 2093 on the CP, so very respectable there. You can actually achieve a 1496 at level 27.5 if you have a zero attack, 15 defense, and 15 stamina there. Now according to my spreadsheets and the math that I have done, Torkoal should rank 11th in bulk. Technically here we're going with 9th because Probopass is unreleased and Giratina can't make it into the Great League. So 11th in bulk and actually 11th in stat product, but technically 9th again here for the same reason. So very, very respectable. I, I like that we're kind of like top 10-ish in, uh, in these ranks here. So that's very, very good. Now let's move on to our moves here. So we actually have two fast moves. Both of them are fire type, so they do both have stab. But Fire Spin is just better. So it kind of goes down to the same thing that we looked at earlier in another deep dive where I'm pretty sure it was Fortress. It was Bug Bite and Struggle Bug maybe where they literally had, if I'm not mistaken, they literally had these exact same numbers. So Fire Spin just gaining a third more energy per turn really, really does make it the better one here. Again, if you'd like to fight me in the comments about it, let me know down there. So moving on to our charge moves here, we do have Earthquake, which is a massive, massive move to Torkoal here. I think that's one of the best moves that he could get. Earthquake costing 65 for 110 damage with a 1.85 damage per energy ratio. Great. We then have Overheat, which is our fire type charge move, costing 80 energy for 150 damage at 1.88 ratio there. Then we lastly here have Solar Beam, which is a very interesting one. For 80 energy, you can do 150 damage at 1.88 damage per energy ratio. So Solar Beam, the reason that I say that one's interesting is because basically the water types that are going to directly counter Torkoal, they actually end up having a hard time getting around Solar Beam. So you actually have a move to cover your weakness. And then also you have Earthquake here, which actually helps cover fire types. So you can actually win fire type matches as well. So pretty interesting move set. Now let's actually talk a little bit about our moves here. So this is the first deep dive that I've ever delved into more than one move set that I think you guys should know about. So usually I go with whatever wins the most percentage matches. And that's just because generally, for me personally, I want to have the best Pokemon widespread win percentage that I can. I want to be able to beat as much as possible and I'll try to basically have Pokemon that cover all of the areas, but I want the biggest Venn diagram, if you can imagine that picture. I want the biggest Venn diagram in the league possible, just covering multiple Pokemon at some points, but also having specific Pokemon for specific cases. Except this time with Torkoal, I was looking at these three moves and I was just like, oh man, that, it's so interesting because Earthquake covers fire, Overheat covers ice, and Solar Beam covers water. So we actually have this like little package inside of Torkoal that actually makes him extremely versatile. So here, here's what I've got. Personally, if I was gonna run a Torkoal, I would personally run Fire Spin, Earthquake, and Overheat. It does give me the most win percentage possible out of all of the Kingdom Cup. But if you were to switch out and use Solar Beam instead of Overheat, you only end up dropping 
5.1% of those matchups. So you don't actually lose too many more. You end up trading off your use case a little bit. Now, of course, you don't hit every Pokemon possible based on your moves, but you have a, a slightly different use case there. So let's actually go over these shield numbers really fast. And I'll, I'll go over both, uh, both move sets for you guys. So first move set that we're gonna look at is the preferred move set for me. Fire Spin, Earthquake, and Overheat. So zero versus zero shields. In the scenario where we are the closing Pokemon and we just have no shields remaining, neither myself nor my opponent have any shields left. We actually win 69.2% of those matchups. Now, whenever I have two shields and my opponent has two shields, so running that number to figure out which Pokemon just end up flat out beating us, no matter how many shields we have, we actually end up winning 97.4% of those matchups. The only two Pokemon that we end up losing to in that scenario is Altaria and Kingdra. And Kingdra will be an interesting Pokemon that we'll talk about uh, kind of one of the hard counters for Torkoal here. Moving on, we actually then take a look at if I had zero shields and my opponent has two shields, which Pokemon can we just flat out beat no matter how many shields they have? This is kind of interesting. So we actually end up winning 15.4% of those matches. And a lot of the ones that we end up winning against are Ice, like Abomasnow and Alolan Sandslash. And we also have a pretty favorable matchup against a lot of the Steel types, like Lucario, yes, Lucario, and Scizor. So you kind of see like, and yes, all four of the Pokemon that I listed do have quad weakness to fire. So Fire Spin puts in more damage than probably either of the, uh, of the, what are these called? Fire Spin definitely does put in more work rather than these charge moves there, but it still stands that you win 15.4% of those matchups. Lastly here, in a scenario where I am the leadoff Pokemon, two shields versus two shields from my opponent, we actually end up winning 43.6%. So what does all that tell you? Well, it tells me that Torkoal is definitely better as a closer. He, he kind of suffers whenever the other Pokemon on the opposite side of the arena has shields. So he's kind of a better closer and considering how high cost all of these moves are, I definitely think he fits more into a heavy hitter role than a shield buster. He's not fast. He doesn't really get to these charge moves as quickly as other Pokemon do. So he doesn't have as much shield pressure. So that means that you really want to be closing with him and pushing out just tons of charge move damage if possible. Now let's actually take a quick look at Fire Spin. Earthquake and Solar Beam. So here the big difference is that in a zero versus zero shield situation, we go down to 64.1% rather than our 69.2. In our two shields versus zero shields, we actually go down to a 96.2. We still end up losing to Altaria and we still end up losing to Kingdra. And now we actually have to tie with Dragonite. But you have to remember Solar Beam can definitely help you out in those matchups because because the energy here is the same if you're going up against a pokemon that's going to be weak to solar beam and not overheat they perform very similarly so in those matchups where you're going up against certain pokemon like celio or lapras or anything like that and maybe you switch into torkoal and you need to just fire off a solar beam that's where that toolkit really begins to shine so you can kind of build your Torkoal to either take care of more of the ice and the steel types, but you can also start to take care of other Pokemon that are gonna be weak to grass that start appearing in the cup. So it kind of really just depends on what your team needs. If it needs a lot more grass coverage, then Solar Beam would definitely be a better option. If it needs more fire coverage, then definitely I would go with Overheat. Both. Both movesets performing so similarly, I think it really just comes down to which one you need more. But of course, as you saw, both movesets do end up losing to Altaria and Kingdra. Hardcore doesn't change those outcomes at all. So keep that in mind that you need something. If you're going to run Torkoal, you need something to answer Altaria and you need an answer to Kingdra as well. Moving on to our matchups here. So in all of the deep dives, I end up taking our subject Pokemon and I throw them up against the top 10 bulkiest Pokemon in the cup. 
Now, Torkoal kept showing up in a lot of the deep dives that we had, but he ends up kind of in a very even situation. So let, let's go through these. So Bastiodon, Probopass, Altaria, and Lapras all end up beating Torkoal. But Torkoal actually wins against Registeel, Regice, Dugong, and Fortress. He actually can tie against Steelix and Skarmory. So while he doesn't necessarily beat most of the top 10, he doesn't necessarily lose to the most of the top 10, he pretty much goes even amongst all of the top 10, which is pretty interesting. I think that Torkoal actually has a pretty good place in the meta if you use him kind of according to his charge moves here. Next, let's actually move on to our counters. Now, in terms of what should you be targeting whenever you put a Torkoal on your team, what should, what role should you really be feeling with Torkoal, and what Pokemon are just really going to be good against Torkoal if you need to be preparing for one? So the Pokemon that end up countering Torkoal really hard are things that are water type. Things like Kingdra, Celio, and Lapras all give Torkoal a really hard time, of course, with our fire typing there. And the same goes for our ground types as well. They are also a really hard counter. Things like Flygon, Alolan Duck Trio, and Bastiodon all give us a really hard time with their ground type moves. Next, on to what you should actually be focusing on with Torkoal. What should you be trying to take down? Things that are steel type, like Registeel, Bronzong and Melmetal, they all have a really hard time coming over this Fire Spin Earthquake combo. And then actually things that are Fire type that don't have access to Flying type moves end up, you do pretty well against those. Things like Monferno, Alolan Marowak, and Typhlosion, they all end up having a hard time getting over uh, the neutral damage that they're going to be pushing. And then they actually end up kind of falling to that Earthquake there. So Fire types are, are pretty okay to actually use your Torkoal going up against. Now in terms of pros and cons for Torkoal here, let's actually go over our cons first. So our first con is that we do end up losing to both Bastiodon and Lapras. So being that we lose to two out of the three kings is kind of crappy. But like I said, Torkoal has a pretty big use case and the fact that, I don't want to give away one of my pros here, but the fact that he can actually beat Lucario is a big deal. The next con that I have written down is that he is a regional and what that means is that he's just really hard to obtain. So it ends up making Torkoal's appearance in the meta pretty slim and if you don't have access to one and you really want to use one it's it's probably going to cost you a little bit of effort to actually get one whether that's Stardust, whether that's trading off something that's important to you like a shiny or anything like that or just simply flying to the region and grabbing one yourself. I mean, it, it's kind of a, a hard Pokemon to obtain, especially here in the States. I've, I've never seen anyone that actually is willing to trade one. Last thing is that Torkoal is pretty slow. Being that we have 3.33 energy per turn and our quickest charge move is 65 energy, that ends up meaning that we should be hitting that in what, less than 10 seconds? Just under 10 seconds if my sick brain isn't completely too sick to do math. So he's pretty slow. He doesn't have a whole lot of shield busting potential. He's definitely a heavy hitter, but unfortunately he does end up being really slow getting to those moves. Now onto our pros here. Uh, of course, I've already mentioned that we do beat Lucario, so that's actually a pretty big deal because Lucario is one of the, obviously he's one of the three kings and we need to be able to beat him to really stand out in the meta. So, you know, Torkoal being able to handle Lucario is pretty nice. I, Lucario has a, a big strong hold on the meta and anything that can take out one of the three kings has definitely got a lot going for it. And our last pro here is that he's actually a really good heavy hitter. So the fact that our moves do cost quite a bit, but they do pay off really well, ends up making him a heavy hitter. And I think he's actually pretty good at it. The fact that he can cover his own typing, the fact that he has coverage to his weakness, and the fact that he has coverage to a lot of the typings in the meta, that makes him a really good heavy hitter in my opinion. Would I use Torkoal on a team myself? 
If I could get one, I definitely want to do a little bit of testing and toolboxing to kind of figure out what role I would put him on as a team. Kind of depending on what my other team members moves are I guess I would need to really figure out which move set to use and depending on which move set I go with he could definitely be a good contender on my team but that's just my opinion I'd like to know your opinion on him down below so that is actually it for today guys uh like I said I'm, I'm sick I'm very sorry if there's more than the usual like errors in this video <sighs> but <laughs> Thank you so much for hanging out. Thank you for sticking around with me. If you like to like videos, make sure you do that. If you don't, you could be that guy. Otherwise, let me know what you have to say down in those comments below. And until our next deep dive, I will catch you then.